So on all these graphs, so two graph in polars, polar coordinates, you're going to first find symmetry. And you're going to graph the clueless method. And you're going to be picking your domain uh, based on symmetry. All right, clueless method, just to review, that means you're making a table and you're gonna plot points. The only difference now is we're going to be making a table of polar points and plotting polar points. So it's the same method we used before, we're just gonna be plotting on a polar grid or a polar graph. So let's start with uh, r equals one minus sine theta. So let's say that you're an algebra hotshot and you think, oh, I can turn this into uh, rectangular coordinates, no problem. You can turn any equation or almost any equation in polars into rectangulars. So let's go ahead and do that. Not part of the question, and I just want you to do this so you can see that uh, what you're going to get is not something that we're familiar with. All right, so I'll switch colors. I don't want to go to red because it's not wrong, but it will be useless. Purple, that'll work. All right, so try to convert to rectangular coordinates. And I see an R and a theta. So what I need to see is an r squared and an r sine theta. So how do I turn this into an equation with an r squared? What correct algebra move could I apply to my original equation to get down to something like this? So if I multiply by r, both sides by r, I get r squared equals r minus r sine theta. So that's how I can get r squared and r sine theta. Now from here, r squared, that's easy. That's x squared plus y squared. r sine theta is easy also. That's y. What about regular r? How do I convert regular r? So I know r squared equals x squared plus y squared. That's what I did to r squared. So this means r is square root x squared plus y squared. So I turned this equation into rectangular coordinates. However, graphing this is not going to be easy. So this is nothing like anything I've graphed before. So you can turn these into rectangular coordinates, but I don't know what the graph looks like. Uh, I doubt I could solve for y, so it's probably not a function. So it's not going to be a function. It's not going to be easy to graph. So some polar equations convert really nicely. We looked at all those last week. There are some other ones that convert nicely, but most of them look like what we saw last week. Uh, this is what happens when you convert an equation uh, that should be converted. You can always convert them, but you get something that is going to be difficult to graph. Desmos can graph this if you ask Desmos to graph an equation. Uh, but let's go ahead and graph this instead in polars. All right, so to, 
don't do this. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to graph in polar coordinates. All right, so we're going to find symmetry first. x-axis is probably the easiest to find because it uh, requires replacing theta with negative theta. The tests, we looked at that at the end of class. These are the polar symmetries that I'm using right here. So we're looking for x-axis first. We're going to replace theta by minus theta. So this is the test I'm running first. After this test, I'll be doing y-axis testing right here. After y-axis, then I may or may not be doing origin. There's two tests for origin. All right, so replace data by negative data. No problem. Our original was r equals 1 minus sine theta. So it's not sine theta anymore, it's sine negative theta. Now, is sine even or odd? So sine's odd, so that negative sign in front of theta can be moved out front instead of just erased. If I have the cosine function, I can just erase that negative sign. Cosine's even. So we got one plus sine theta. You pass the test if you get back to where you started. So you have to ask yourself, did or is this the original equation? So this is this equivalent to the original equation? So why is this not equivalent to the original? What's messing it up? The original is at the top of the board. got an R, it's got a 1, it's got a sign. What's the difference? So that guy should be a minus right there. So a real fast word of warning. Those two equations are the same. No. Now they're the same. Is that right? Yeah. So those two are the same. So it can be alternative forms of the same equation. So you want to make sure it's not an alternative form. All right, so that's definitely different. So we failed our x-axis test. So that's out. We're going to look for y-axis now. So y-axis, we're going to replace theta by something different. And I think this is pi minus theta. You could draw these uh, little graphs out with symmetry if you want. Or you, if you're a memorizer, you just memorize, replace theta with pi minus theta. All right, let's go ahead and do this substitution. So now we're going to have to do some uh, trig identities. So we're going to use the difference formula for sine. So again, that difference formula I'm going to give you. Somewhere I wrote it down. Here we go. Difference formula for sine. So we're using this right here. So this will be on the back of your quiz. You won't have to memorize this. So it goes sine cos minus cos sine. So what is sine of pi? So here's pi over here. What is sine? What y value is right there in the unit circle? Zero. So sine of pi is zero. Zero times, I don't know, uh, zero times uh, anything is going to be zero minus, what is cosine of pi? What x value is on the left side of the unit circle? So that's our negative one. So 
So we've got zero plus sine theta. So we just get one minus sine theta. And that is what we started with. So we swapped out our angle and got back to where we started. So this is what passing a test looks like. So I like to put a box or a circle around the ones I pass and cross out the ones that I fail. So it's real easy when I look back at my work, ah, I crossed out x-axis, y-axis has a box around it. Now remember symmetry, you can't have two. You either go zero, one, or all three. So does that mean we do have origin or we don't have origin? We don't. We don't. So if we had origin, we'd have two symmetries. So there's no origin. So you can run the origin test, or you can just uh, use the fact that you can only have, uh, or you cannot have two symmetries. So there's no way to get origin. All right, how do we use the symmetries? So how do we use y-axis symmetry? So first of all, you have to think of what does it look like. So y-axis symmetry means what happens on the right side happens on the left side. So it looks like this. If I, you know what happens on the right side, you know what happens on the left side, vice versa. So this means if I pick angles on the right side, I will get to build up the left side of the graph. So I'm going to use quadrant 4 and 1. So I'm using quadrant four and one so that uh, when I apply symmetry, it'll basically rotate or reflect the graph across the y-axis and I'll get the other side. So it's really important. We're doing the clueless method. It can take a long time if you don't use symmetry. If I don't use symmetry, I basically have to graph all four. I have to go all around all four quadrants and plot whatever, 16 points or so. It's gonna take a long time. So this way I'll get to only plot half the number of points. All right, so clueless method. So we got theta. I'm going to write all uh, theta values I know between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And unfortunately, there's quite a few. Negative pi over 2, negative pi over 3 negative pi over 4, negative pi over 6, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. So I'm just laying out quadrant 4 to quadrant 1, all the angles that I know in increasing order. So you're generally going to be plotting two quadrants worth of angles, and you're just starting at the smallest going up to the biggest. Now our function's a little bit complicated. Normally you would write this, except I want to do this in a few steps. So what I'm going to do instead of getting this entire thing on my first column, let's just focus on getting sine. So my first column, I'm just going to worry about sine. And leave a little extra space. We're going to put the approximate values in here as well. So what is sine negative pi over 2 is negative 1. Sine negative pi over 3, negative square root 3 over 2. Negative 1 over square root 2, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1 over square root 2, square root 3 over 2, 1. So any questions on laying out sine values? Now I'm going to write down the approximations. So this is where those approximations come into play. They're right over here. The only one I really need to use, or the only two I need to use are those two, 0.87 and 0.71. So I'm going to use those two approximations.
This is going to be negative 0.87. Negative 0.71. This next one's actually equal negative 0.5. Now, if I was Graphing r equals sine theta, this would be my r right here. But I still have a few more steps to do. So I could make a column for negative sine theta and then one minus sine theta. So I'm just going to take all these values and make them negative now. So we got 1, 0.87, 0 0.71, 0 0.50, negative 0.5. Negative 0.71, negative 0.87, negative 1. And now 1 minus sine theta.